Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wa la'aqibutu lil muttaqin Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'du fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasanah وقال سبحانه وتعالى فليحذر الذين يخالفون عن امره ان تصيبهم فتنه فتنه او يصيبهم عذاب اليم صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم ان الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله على النبي الامي واله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاه وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله اللهم لا سهل الا ما جعلته سهلا وانت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن اذا شئت سهلا اللهم يا كريم اكرمنا بنور الفهم واخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we shall go through covenant number 161 from الواقح الأنوار القدسية في بيان العهود المحمدية the Muhammadan covenants and it is connected with the previous covenant the 160th covenant in relation to adopting simplicity and leading a simple life now, if you look, if you take a look and look at it, you will know that life is not so simple as it was before. There's, uh, there's someone who sent me a, um, a message. It was a very thought-provoking message, and I probably add to that as well. And in that message, they said, that before communication was based on letters, writing letters. It was simple. Today we have smartphones with unlimited calls, unlimited minutes, unlimited texts. Yet we still don't communicate with our families, with our friends. Before technology was very simple, the health system was very simple, yet people were getting cured. Yeah. But now we have complex, high, highly uh, class, high class, A-rated technological equipment in medicine, yet people are getting more ill. There's more diseases that are prevalent in this day and age than they were before. Talking about masajid, before the masjids, masajid were very, very simple. We didn't have decorations. The mosques weren't huge, gigantic. <coughs> multi-million pound mosques that we are building, you know, the, the new constructions that we see today. No mosque is less than a two million pounds, three million pounds, four million pounds. But those masajid were filled with people who had the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were God conscious people. The masjid used to be f filled, to, filled to the brim. But unfortunately, we have huge mosques and we have very few people. Again, with homes, people used to live, entire families and the extended families used to live together in one home, in one house, under one roof, all together with love and compassion. Today we have huge houses, mansions with plenty of rooms, plenty of space, but small families. We have lots of money, yet there's no love, there's no rest, there's no tranquil. There's no peace, there's no contentment. We have so much ease uh, of uh, communication, ease in life, in many aspects that save our time, yet we say we don't have enough time. So this is the comparison that we have when there was simplicity, when people used to lead, uh, lead a simple life, talking about weddings, weddings before, they used to finish in about two, three hours maximum. Today, weddings start in the morning, and then not in the morning, in the morning of the fifth day before the wedding, and still continue five days uh, post uh, Walima from dawn till dusk. And again, with our food feasts, we used to have simple food and we were content. Today, we have 
or we are fed and we are entertained with so much, yet we are not content with that. So Imam Ash'arani he is exhorting us, he is counseling us to revert back to the prophetic sunnah and adopt a life of simplicity. This is, simplicity doesn't mean that you live a life like a nomad and you're not allowed to wear nice clothing and etc. You are allowed to do that but obviously that should be within limits and with good intentions it, they become meritorious. But generally speaking, this is what he has said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, أَخَذَ عَلَيْنَا الْعَهْدَ الْعَامِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْ نَتْرُكَ التَّرَفُّعَ فِي اللِّبَاسِ تَوَاضُعًا وَاقْتِدَاءً بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ One thing, I, one thing I forgot to mention there in comparison, before there was scarcity of masahif, the copies of the Qur'an were rare. But every single person, especially from the prophetic school, the Sahaba, all of them used to be Memorizers of the Quran, they were all Hufad of the Quran. They recited the Quran by the day and by the night. Today we have hundreds of copies. Even in our homes, we have ten copies of Al Quran and Kareem at least. Yet we don't recite it. When it was scarce, people used to recite it. People used to love it. People used to have this yearning and this yearning desire to 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 stick to the Quran by the day and by the night. And again, I would like to add to that. Today we have a lot of information, but very little knowledge. Knowledge is ilm deen. Knowledge is that which, which transforms your life. Knowledge is that which inculcates into your heart God consciousness. There's too much information here on, the, on smartphones, people sending you a hadith, a night of the Quran, and videos, and speeches. So many speeches, so many speakers, yet so little amal. Before, speeches were very little. They used to speak. Less. The Messenger of Allah and the Sahabi used to speak very little. Sayyidatina Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha mentions the Prophet Sallallahu speech was scattered, yani scattered in the sense that it was spaced. Yani if someone wanted to count his words, Sallallahu Alaihi they would be able to count it, they would be able to recollect whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said. Today our speeches go on and our programs go on and on and on, but amal is very scarce. Amal is very little. And the other thing is we have so many speeches and so many programs and so little, so few attendees. Before there were programs that were few and far between, but mashallah the masajid used to be filled to the brim. brim because there were sincere people who used to come with the intention to learn the deen, to practice it, with the, with the intention to enhance their knowledge of the deen. Today there's this overindulgence in everything, extravagance and ex, you can say in a vertical as extremism. So he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, this covenant has been taken from us which reaches the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we abandon and abstain ourselves from wearing clothes that exhibit vainglory and haughtiness and pride. Tawadu'an wa qtida'an bi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashabihi out of humbleness and in order to emulate and imitate and follow Rasulullah and his companions to live a simple life. Subhanallah. And I'm going to mention later on how simple was the life of the Messenger and actually I'll just mention to you right now what the Messenger what lifestyle he had the it says in Shamayl al-Tirmidhi that the Prophet ﷺ had a cloak that would be spread out for him wherever he went. It would be folded twice underneath him. And then he continues saying, the Prophet ﷺ would often sleep only on a palm mat. Our, we have, everything has become complex. Yani, technology is complex. You had phones that were easy, you know, the brick phone, mashallah, that you could, and even before that, your dial phone that you had, phone booths that you used to go to and pay five pence, whatever, and you used to be able to speak for hours and end, mashallah, but things have got com complicated. People have got complicated. People have become complex. Any, uh, being in the teaching field, complexity and complication is now even in children. They used to behave before, there used to be some sense of adab and respect, they used to be awestruck, awestruck. Uh, mind the pun, um, 
They used to have adab, but today they've become complicated, complex, difficult to handle, difficult to discipline. So everything in life has become so complicated. Just so remember homes that were built years back. They are still erect, they are still sound, but newly built homes need renovation, need refurbishment every five, every ten years. They don't stand for so long. So with ease in life that we've got nowadays, there's complications as well. <clears throat> Rasulullah sallallahu would sleep only on a palm mat, not on a memory foam mattress, not on a uh, double king-sized bed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he sallallahu is shahanshah, the king of all kings sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to rest, recline on a palm mat with nothing else underneath it. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu reported, this narration is from Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud in uh, Imam Al-Tabarani's Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir. I once went to see the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he was in his chamber and it was so hot inside. It was so hot. It was like a bath. It was like a sauna. I went into a sauna room. Allahu Akbar. Today we have AC, we have fans, we have windows, double glazed windows to protect us from the adverse weather conditions outside. <coughs> Radiators and heating systems inside. And still we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet was sleeping on the palm mat that had left its imprint marks on his side. Aapke ke Seeing this, I began to cry, and when he woke up, he asked me, What causes you to cry, Abdullah? I replied, O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khazraz and Caesar, Qaysar and Kisra, sleep comfortably upon silken beddings, and here you are sleeping on this palm mat that has left marks on you. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Do not cry, Abdullah, for they have the low world, and we have the hereafter. Allah Akbar. In another narration of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the narration in the incident of Ila and Takhir which I mentioned to you before. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma reported that Umar ibn al-Khattab related radiallahu ta'ala anhuma jama'een. I went to see the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was lying upon a palm mat. I sat down and saw that he was wearing a loin, loin cloth and nothing more. And saw that the palm mat had left an imprint on, upon his blessed side. Today, if we find a little bit of pain, you know, on our couches, on our sofas, uh, we, we start complaining. We say, get rid of these, we need to buy new ones. Yeah. Where is the contentment of the heart? Where is simplicity? He then says, I saw, I saw in the home the possessions of the Prophet ﷺ, and he says there was about a sa' of barley, approximately um, two to three kilograms maximum and an untanned animal skin hanging on the wall. Seeing this sight, my eyes welled up with tears. The Messenger asked me, What makes you cry, O son of Khattab? I replied, O Prophet of Allah وسلم, How can I not cry when this palm mat has left an imprint on your side? And here is your provision that is so that I see is so scant, while Khazruz and Caesar, Qaysar and Kisra enjoy the fruits and flowing rivers, and you are the Prophet of Allah, the chosen one, the best of the creation, and these are your scarce possessions. Allah. The Prophet said, O son of Al Khattab, are you not pleased that we have the hereafter and they have this low world? They are a folk for whom the fine things of this world have been hastened and given, and they are bound to vanish, while we are a folk, a group whose fine things and bounties and blessings are. Delayed for us, prepared for us, inshallah, in the akhirah. Sure. It's how the Prophet Sallallahu used to inculcate contentment in the hearts of the companions. Mm -hmm. Same with Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, I mentioned to you, wearing patched clothing. Sayyiduna uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, when he bequeathed his people uh, at the time of uh, his departure from this mundane world, he had appointed Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu through mushawar, obviously. And then he left a bowl and a few other possessions and then he said to them, he said to his family, take all of these and put these, deposit these in the, in the Islamic treasury, this is for the Muslims. That is the only thing a Khalif, a Khalifatul Muslim, Amir al Mu'min, the first Khalif of Islam left behind. Allahu Akbar. We shall continue inshallah later on but let me just uh, read from this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَلَوْ كَانَ مَعَنَا قَنَاطِيرُ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ Even if we have 
mountains or a tremendous amount of gold, we should still adopt simplicity and have tawadu and inkisar and have humbleness in our lifestyle. فَنَجْعَلُ ذَلِكَ فِي مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنَ الْإِنْفَاقِ عَلَى الْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْمَحَاوِيجِ And the excess that we have, we should try and spend it upon the poor, upon the destitute, upon the needy, out of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you had affluence of wealth, still live a life of simplicity. Give the excess away in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give it away in the way of Allah fi sabilillah to the muhajirin, to, to, to the fuqara and the masakin and the mahawij. And then he says, وَهَذَا الْعَهْدُ يَخِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْفُقَرَاءِ فَضْلًا عَنِ الْعَوَامِ This covenant, many people are negligent of it from the fuqara, let alone from the laymen, let, let alone from the, from the common people. Some people who call themselves the fuqara, يعني the Sufis. رُبَّمَا خَلَفَ الْوَاحِدُ مِنْهُمْ نَحْوَ سَبِعِينَ زِيقًا ثَمَنُ كُلِّ زِيقٍ ثَلَاثَةٌ ذَهَبًا أو أكثر. وَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ مَنْ مَنْ خَلَفَ سَبْعَ مِئَةِ زِيْقٍ مِنَ الْعُلَمَةِ At times what happens is, even from this fuqara, there are people who have avarice in their hearts, greed for this world, that they leave behind 70 garments. And the, garment, the value of one single garment equates to three gold dinars or more. And at times he says, I've seen ulama who have left behind 700 garments. يعني Allahu Akbar. Then what can we say about the awam? وَكَانَ سَيِّدَ عَلِيُّ الْخَوَاسِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ يَقُولُ يَنْبَغِ التَّسْلِيمُ لِمَنْ لَبِسَ الثِّيَابَ الْفَاخِرَةِ مِنَ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ كَسَيِّدِ عَبْدِ الْقَادِرِ الْجِيْلِيِّ وَسَيِّدِ عَلِيُّ الْإِبْنِ وَفَاءِ وَسَيِّدِ مَدْيَنَ وَأَضْرَى بِهِمْ Now obviously, the, again, admonishing us that we shouldn't point fingers at everyone and anyone, especially the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they wear garments that are elegant, they may be A-rated, beautiful, nice, elegant clothing, do not criticize them, do not object to them. He says, especially the likes of Sayyidul Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it has been mentioned in Bahaj al-Asra sharif by Imam al-Shattanawfi radiallahu ta'ala anhu and narrated again by Imam Yahya al-Tadifi in Qada'id al-Jawahir. That Sayyidul Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani gave a beautiful, expensive fabric to a tailor to make a jubba, a robe. So the tailor looked at the garment, he opened it, and he was taken aback. And he thought to himself, how can this sheikh claim himself to be a Sufi from the fuqara, yet he wears such expensive items of clothing? This thought just occurred in his mind, what happened? There was a corn, yani a pimple that appeared uh, in his foot. So at first he thought this is nothing, it's okay, he, he, he uh, you know, overlooked it. Later on it, it came to the brink of being cancerous. And he went to all the physicians, they couldn't cure him. And then later on he realized that this very disease that I've been afflicted with is a cause of me objecting and criticizing Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilan radiallahu ta'ala. So then he went straight to Shaykh Abdul Qadir, or he was taken to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilan radiallahu ta'ala anhu and before he would say, any, say anything our master al ghawth al-Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu said how dare you criticize the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa don't you know that whatever we wear we are commanded by Allah subhanahu to wear only then do we wear these garments the same with Shaykh Ali ibn Wafa radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, whose mazashib is in Cairo in near Jabal Muqattam, alhamdulillah, we've been on to visit the Sadat al Wafa'iyah, the masters, the Wafa'i masters, the, his family and the great awliya are resting there. Sayyidi Madian al Maghribi, radiallahu ta'ala, and others who are of, uh, and others who are similar from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then says, Waqad kana Sayyidi Abdul Qadir yalbasu kulla dhira'im min al Khami bidinarin. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jinan radiallahu ta'ala used to wear garments. Every arm's length of that would equate to a gold dinar. Yani the fabric was such that an arm's length of that fabric would cost a gold dinar. فَاعْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِ بَعْضُ الناس. Some people then laid an objection. فَقَالَ الْعَبْدُ إِذَا مَا تَكُفِّنَ مَرَّةً He said when a person dies, he's shrouded. جب کوئی سیکھ کے انتقال ہو جائے مر جائے تو اسے کفن پہنایا جاتا ہے 
وأنا قدمت أكثر من مئة موتة في مخالفة نفسي فلي أن ألبس كل بدلة ثمن مئة كفن سبحان الله As for me, I have already experienced a hundred deaths by Subhanallah, annihilating my ego more than a hundred times. I've killed my ego more than a hundred times. So I've experienced death more than a hundred times. So I have the right to wear garments and a coffin equivalent to uh, the coffin that's been given to a person a hundred times, worried to die a hundred times. Or to a hundred people who have passed away. Subhanallah, because I've ex already experienced death a hundred times. मैंने अपने आप को मार दिया है सौ दफा अपने नफ्स की मुखालफत के साथ मैंने अपने आप को सौ से जायद दफा मैं अपने आप को मार चुका हूं और जो मर जाता है उसे एक दफा कफन दिया जाता है तो अब जाहिर सी बात है कि मैंने अपने आप को सौ दफा मैंने अपने आप को मार दिया है तो मेरा हक बनता है कि मैं सौ मौत की कफन उसकी कीमत का ये लिबास में पहनू सुबह ثم السر في ترك اللباس الرفيع أن النفس تميل إليه بالخاصية وتفرح به وكل شيء فرح به العبد من الدنيا حجبه عن دخول حضرة الله عز وجل كما تحجب المعصية The other secret in abandoning and abstaining from wearing elegant clothing expensive clothing is that the ego the nafs inclines towards items of clothing especially towards items of clothing when you're wearing an elegant item of clothing even if you're praying namaz your heart will still be there your eyes will be gazed on the items of clothing and the person becomes happy and experiences joy by looking at his garment and everything from the dunya, which makes a person pleased, and anything from the materialistic possessions of this world which pleases a servant will become an obstacle for him entering into the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same manner as sins become an obstacle for a person entering into the presence of Allah. So when you become happy with your new car, when you become overjoyed with the new item of clothing that you've just purchased for yourself, when you are, uh, you know, overexcited with the new pair of trainers that you're wearing, then this becomes an obstacle for you entering into the presence of Allah. You've become blocked. There's an obstruction there. There's a screen. You've been screened from entering into the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَيُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يَجِدَ قَلْبَهُ حَالِ لُبْسِ الرَّفِيعِ الْفَاخِرِ مِثْلَ حَالِ فِي حَالِ لُبْسِ الْخَلَقِ الْقَلِيلَ الثَّمَنِ فَلَا يَقْدِرُ وَمَنْ شَكَّ فَلْيُجَرِّبُ A man wants to keep the same state of his heart at the time of wearing expensive, elegant, A-rated, first-class uh, items of clothing. He wants to keep the heart, his heart in the same state of consciousness, in the same state of, you know, taqwa, as, it, as he was were he to wear ragged, shabby clothing, which wouldn't equate to even a few dina, uh, dirhams, let alone dinars, but he can't keep the this, this, this state of his heart stable. It changes is bound to change. And he says, whoever doubts this, then let him experience it himself. If you're wearing a simple item of clothing, you're praying namaz, wear something that dazzles the eye and then start praying namaz and look and uh, investigate the, the uh, state of your heart. You see a change, you will see a drastic difference. If you're driving a Toyota Corolla and then you sit in a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Bugatti, Haribai, you'll, you'll vouch for this, you probably know that your heart changes. He didn't say, I'm driving Ferrari, but I'm, you know, I have taqwa here, you know, khulus, I deem everyone is superior than me. It's difficult. He says it's difficult. وَكَذَلِكَ جَرَّبْنَا السُّجُودَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ الطَّاهِرَةِ بِلَا حَائِلٍ يَجِدُ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْفِسَاحًا وَانْشِرَاحًا وَصِّلَةً بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِخِلَافِ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَى بِسَاطٍ أَوْ حَصِيرٍ وہ بھی یہ بھی فرماتے ہیں کہ زمین پر ڈائریکٹ بغیر کسی چیز کے حائل یعنی مسلح یا کوئی بھی چیز کے بغیر ڈائریکٹ مٹی پر زمین پر سجدہ کرتا ہے تو جو کیفیت اسے ملتی ہے جو لذت اسے حاصل ہوتی اس وقت جو اللہ تعالیٰ کی بارگاہ میں جو اسے کنیکشن ملتا ہے جو اسے تعلق ملتا ہے نماز میں وہ اس وقت نہیں ملتا کہ جب وہ کارپیٹ کے اوپر یا مسلح کے اوپر نماز پڑھتا ہے اللہ اکبر to the extent that if someone was to pray directly on earth without any obstacle in between, a prayer mat or anything, 
he would find infisah and wansharah and he would find subhan expansion of the heart in terms of the spiritual world and he would find uh, rupture and joy and he would find subhanallah the beauty and the sweetness of conversating with allah subhanahu wa he would experience the maqam of ihsan greater than were he to do sajda on a carpet or a prayer mat because it's destruction at times what happens is we have so fancy obviously this is okay to an extent some people i've seen in some mosques they have so much design on the on the place of sujood that the person while he's praying namaz is actually so dazzled by and mesmerized by the embroidery he's like fantasized he's in the world of design rather than in the spiritual world where he's conversating with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again with mosques there's dazzling lights color everywhere decorations in every empty space that a person finds the committee says let's paint let's paint some flowers let's uh, paint a scenic picture there put some frames there outdated 1960s whatever it may be we just need to fill the space in this attraction but again the heart's not there the heart's not connected with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huge mosques multi-million pound mosques designed painted decorated ornamented with huge chandeliers but bereft of musallis, bereft of people who come and pray namaz with, with sincerity. Allah Allah. Wa madaru kalam shari'i wa nusrihi lana ala ukufina fi hadrati Allah Azza wa Jal liyuti al khidmata lil haqqi haqqaha. Wa tamalla bi shuhudihi ta'ala li anahu sallallahu sallam ashfaqu alayna min fusina fadlan an walidina fama mana'ana min fi'li shayin illa huwa yubi'iduna an hadrati al haqqi ta'ala wa qad akhbarana anna kulla man takabbara qasamahu allahu ta'ala He then says the crux and the reason of why the Messiah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us and informed us and instructed us and counseled us and advised us to live a simple life and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly tells, why the Prophet has constantly told us that do things that will allow you to stay constantly in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so that you can give, you can serve Allah, you can express ubudiyah, servitude and servanthood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is your right to be a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give the full right of ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he enjoys witnessing the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore cast and leave and abstain from all things which distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dunya is an entire distraction the Prophet said in the dunya hulwatun khadira this dunya is sweet it's green it's appealing to the eye but in reality it's nothing it's just charms it is just hallucination, illusions that people see, a mirage that a person sees in the midst of a desert when he goes there, it's nothing. The reality is that you stay in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa that charm and that beauty and that a joy and happiness and rupture surpasses all other joy, subhanallah. And he, then he says, Rasulullah sallallahu has told us why? Because Rasulullah is the most compassionate from the entire creation of Allah subhanahu to us, even than our parents. The Prophet has more compassion and mercy upon us than even our parents. That is why the Prophet has told us everything that we should do and everything that we should abstain from because things that are prohibited, they will take you away from the presence of Allah. They will be things that will distance you from the rupture and the joy that you were to be received way to stay away from in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned anna kulla man takabbara qasamahu Allah whosoever expresses arrogance and pride and haftiness Allah will destroy him if a person wears an item of clothing and walks arrogantly you know today's youngsters and the way they walk Allahu Akbar they actually need to learn how to walk how to walk like a human being any pirbab inshallah a true muslim inshallah how a human being walks our primordial nature is that we have been created out of soil and the and the and the the innate characteristic of soil is that when you throw it up it goes down soil is trodden on soil is pierced soil is used to sow seeds so that it then grows forth 
plants that bear fruit and that grow trees that are laden with fruit. So in, in, soil in its natural characteristic has humbleness and tawadu. But unfortunately some inverted commas human beings, I'm being very nice and kind to them, calling them human beings, more like monstrous vampires, uh, do not walk and talk and conversate and live like human beings. And Islam is Deenul Fitra. Islam is a religion which removes all of these obstacles, which, uh, you know, distance ourselves from our fitra and then bring us back to our original state of humbleness and simplicity and tawadu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to be content with what we have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me and everyone the tawfiq to uh, follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to internalize and emulate his sunnah and his seerah. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Sallallahu ala nabi nabi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya habibi ya Rasulullah. اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي عذاب النار اللهم ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وتوفنا مسلمين اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عيون وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يسمع اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها فاغفر لها اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم استر عوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا اقرأوا الفاتحة إن الله ملاكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما جز الله عنا سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هو أهله سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلاما للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين